are, are back. back. I'm sorry, I, I, have I have had to do, do the, the keyboard, keyboard intro, intro myself, myself today. today. I'm not, I'm not trained, trained, so I just, so I just do, do what I can with this toy keyboard. keyboard. Hopefully, we get, get something, something better, better for our intro music, music soon enough. enough. And Edie, who is normally here on Ed Video's Open Circuit Live web show, is once again not here. She has a lot of schoolwork to do, and that's important. Um, so, um, so she's, she's still, still at, at home, home, and maybe, maybe she'll be she'll back, back tomorrow, tomorrow when we, we have, have Versa. Versa. Today we have, we have an incredible guest from Guelph, Guelph. Uh, uh, art uh, artist, artist Carolyn Riddell, Riddell is, is waiting, waiting in the wings, wings over here on, on my laptop, laptop ready, ready to talk to, talk to us. us. Um, very, excited very excited to chit chat, -chat about, about what about, about all, all the things, things that she does, does and uh, you'll, you'll see a lot, lot of examples of her work today. today. But, but before, before we, we get, get going, going with that, that uh, I'd, like I'd like to do a, uh, talk a little, little bit about, about the show and, and some upcoming, upcoming guests, guests first. first. Um, uh, one, uh, one thing I'm going to mention today, today announced today, is that uh, I've decided with ED and with that video that I think that we're going to reduce the amount of shows uh, per week. Uh, we started this about three or four weeks ago, and the idea was to go every uh, weekday at 2 o'clock, um, and that's been great and so awesome, and I know a lot of people who are willing to be on the show with great stories and work to share, but it's also become a little intense uh, to keep up with the new show each day. We called it Open Circuit because... Uh, uh, we, didn't we didn't think, think there, there was going, going to be a to format, be a but the, but the idea, idea of interviewing artists, artists sort of naturally evolved as a good format, format I think. Um, and then, um, you, know, you know, to, to do, do a good interview, interview uh, it's quite, quite a lot, lot of prep work, work to, get to get all the images, images and videos and questions, and questions figured out. And, uh, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's just become, become a little intense for us to, to keep up with it. And beyond that, I think that... Uh, uh, we, we can, can do a better, better job, job if we do uh, less, less shows, shows per week. week. Um, so, so I think, I think uh, uh, we, we're, 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 the, the upcoming, upcoming guests, uh, their schedule will happen. happen. I think we're going to switch to like a Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. format just to kind of rein it in a little bit. Still, um, you know, still a lot of good stuff I hope will happen on Open Circuit. There'll just be a few less artists, I guess, being featured, a little less content being made, but still... Uh, you know, you know, two, two, a, two, two a day, day we're hoping that's, that's uh, two, two a week, week we're hoping that's still still, still great. great. Um, and, and a lot, lot of people, people uh, kind of waiting, kind of waiting to, confirm to confirm exact dates, dates but, but some very exciting people uh, coming, coming up as guests here. here. Um, um, so, so who do we, we have, have uh, coming, coming coming up as far as guests? Oh, let's just go to these slides. Tomorrow, here on Open Circuit, we are interviewing Versa, Monica, and Alex live right in Guelph here with about their live AV act, band, performance, uh, whatever you want to call it. They, um, they've done a lot in this area and beyond. I'm really excited to kind of geek out with them and talk about what they do. Then next week on May 4th, we have Julie Ferranda joining us from Glasgow, Scotland, where she's currently living, to talk about many facets of her art career. Then Dustin Seabrook next week on May 5th, talking about his Project Isolation, Isolation Project. Uh, project, project isolation, isolation I think. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's a series, series of videos, videos where people uh, uh, email him video clips of what they're doing in isolation, and he has a very beautiful knack for putting putting that all together to tell sort of a unified story of what's going on. Excited for to speak with Dustin. Then another Guelph artist, Corey Steckel, coming at us uh, next week on May 6th, talking about uh, what he does and uh, his collage work. He'll be joining us from where he's currently at uh, in Cape Breton Island. So let's get into it with uh, Carolyn Riddell. Uh, let's, let's take a look and see if we can find her. Um, here, here we go. go. Oh, let's, let's see, let's, let's see, let's see. see. <gasps> there, there you are. are. Can, can you see me and hear me, Carolyn? Yes, I can. Hello. 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 Thanks, Thanks so, so much for taking the time to talk to me today, today and, and willing, willing to share your work. work. I'm, I'm very excited, excited for, for the next, next hour or so. We chat, chat about many things about you and your life and your work and your experiences, many things. So I really appreciate it. Let's start out just like, let's start out nice and easy. Where are you at and what are you doing? <laughs> well, uh, can I just start um, firstly by thanking you so much. I've, I've watched a few of these interviews, and I, I think it's just an incredible forum that you're offering. And even if it's just at two days a week, um, given what we're all going through in our 
need for information and understanding what's going on. It's, it's a great forum. So really happy and honored to be part of it. Um, oh, yeah, lots going on. <laughs> um, and, and before we, I guess, really get into the, the meat and potatoes of the conversation, I would like to dedicate this next hour or however long we chat to, uh, to, to three people who, who are significant to me and, um, uh, and to others. Uh, the first is the um, recently departed Zarina Hashmi, whose work I um, became uh, very familiar with and endeared to um, when I was in India, and she just passed away a couple days ago. And I know my colleagues in India are mourning the loss of her. So, um, And then, um, not in my direct family, but in my chiropractic family, um, my, my uncle, uh, Leo Rosenberg, who was a formidable uh, human and animal chiropractor, 60-year practice, great attitude for life, um, left me with a lot of really great uh, uh, tenants for, you know, moving through life, um, and we just lost him last week. And then also the community, um, we, love, we, um, we mourn the passing of Lois Vetridge, who made this beautiful um, ring that I cherish and wear every day. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, I always like to honor the, the people who influenced me and, and who have made a, a real difference and, and formidable lives. Worth, uh, worth remembering. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry for these people, people who have recently, recently passed, passed away that are close to you. It's a, uh, you know, a tough time for something, something like that, that on top of everything else that's actually going on, too. too but, but it's very, it's very, it's very uh, uh, kind of you to, to remember them that way and honor them. Thank you. And I guess with the physical distancing, um, we can keep them alive in our hearts and, and in our thoughts. So that's ramping up for everybody who's going through some sort of loss. So I just want to... Uh, go there to start this off <laughs> well that, that's, that's kind, kind of you uh, uh, uh you're, a, you're, you're an, an artist, artist you're a traveler, you're a, traveler you're, a teacher, you're a teacher you're a researcher you do a lot of things, things. um uh, in uh, guelph and beyond, beyond as well, well. we're, we're going to talk, talk about, about uh, different, different segments, segments of, of your, your life, life today, today. Um, um uh starting starting, starting with, with your uh, uh your um uh, travels, travels and, and how that, that your significant amount of traveling, traveling throughout your life, your life ongoing has really um, influenced, influenced what you do um, and how you think. think. But, but also, also um, then we're going to talk about your printmaking, printmaking then uh, uh, some painting, some, some textile, textile and thread and works, and then um, uh, talk, about talk about some of your personal, personal um, things, things and challenges, challenges uh, over the next hour. But just so our viewers know, about an hour ago, I. Went, went by, by Carolyn's, Carolyn's house, which isn't too far from where I live, live here in Guelph, and uh, 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 she, she did something did really amazing. amazing. I'm very excited for. for. Um, do you want to tell, tell tell our viewers, viewers what this is, is and what we what, what they can, can expect at the end of the end show? show? Um, yes, with uh, physical distancing respected, uh, Scott came over and I went through the ritual of um, preparing and, um, and sipping uh, the Turkish coffee. Um, I like to honor traditions, and I've had the good fortune of being, uh, having gone to Turkey about 30 times in my life so far, and uh, learning that uh, the art of conversation and sitting and talking, it, it's, it's often about a two-hour <laughs> process, but the whole process of making tea and offering it to some, sorry, coffee and offering it to somebody, um, and then we will follow up with a reading towards the end of this. I'm going to read so it's sitting here waiting. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. excited. <laughs> I'm very excited to hear <laughs> what uh, lies ahead for me. I, I feel like I, I needed some guidance or uh, something <laughs> to nudge me uh, uh, to do the right things. But I want to talk about, first of all, what kind of nudged you into doing art. Uh, thanks for providing. We'll take a look at this uh, child, early childhood drawing. Um, uh, uh, it's amazing, amazing to, to see, see that, that and, and I always like to talk to guests, guests about what, what uh, do they have any early childhood, childhood recollections of anything, anything that maybe pushed them to pursue, pursue the, the creative, creative arts? Um, yes, there there were a couple very poignant. The one that um, I, I do remember, I was about three, and it was in the evening, my parents were sitting on the couch and there was a, a bunch of uh, paper and pencils on the floor. And I remember just crouching down and started scribbling. And the feeling of that, that, you know, the tactility, of course, I wasn't very verbal back then, but I just, 
you know, in a primal way, just started making marks on the paper. And I really think my first cognitive thought that I remember was, oh, there's nothing like this. This is this is what I want to do. I, I didn't concretize the na notion of being an artist, but I just, the, the making of a mark was uh, extremely affirming. And it, it just felt like there was a whole world inside there. So... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're, so you're, you're from, from you're, you're born, born in Kitchener, Kitchener right? right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, how, 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 did how did you uh, find, find yourself, yourself in Guelph? Guelph? Was it, it to go to the University of Guelph? Guelph? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Um, yes, I was born in Kitchener and went to high up until high school, and then um, as a child, my my parents' uh, really close friends lived in Guelph, uh, just right on off of Exhibition Park. So I spent a lot of time playing in Exhibition Park as a kid. And I always loved the trees there. I loved the space. Um, their house was right on the corner, uh, Mott and Exhibition area. And um, I just thought it was magical. And when I went back to Kitchener, it just doesn't seem as magical. And part of that was because the neighborhood that I grew up in was one of the bigger, older houses um, where the art gallery, uh, KW Art Gallery in the center of the square is now. Um, that was my formative neighborhood, but that unfortunately was raised when they wanted to put the, the new city hall there. So that, so it was nice to come over to Guelph and, and be in a neighborhood that had a lot of character, and a lot of history, um, and, and Guelph was just always really special to me. So when it came to applying for university, uh, I hadn't even seen the campus, I, and I was accepted. And I went, "Yep, that, that's." I was accepted to three or four universities, and I thought, "No, I'm." I'm just gonna go to Guelph. It's just I like it there. Well, what, so was, what it was it like, like in, the, in, the, in the mid '80s, 80s at uh, uh, University of Guelph? I, uh, I, uh, I only had I've never, I never went, went there, but my wife did, and uh, had, had some, some kind of loose affiliations, affiliations or connections with it for about the last 15 years since I've lived in Guelph. But what was it like in the in the '80s in the art program at University of Guelph? Well, I pretty much lived in Zavitz Hall. I'd get there early in the morning and stay till. I think we were allowed in the building 24 hours a day, and this was before the big renovation. So the printmaking was on the lower level, um, sculpture was on the main level, and painting was up on the third floor, the old wooden floors, and the, the windows were all both on the front and the back of the building. The light was incredible, so it made sense for the painting department to be up there. Um, and the printmaking, it, it sort of had this sort of, I won't say bunker, but it, it, it was like this cave, and, and, and uh, we had the printmaking collection, and I was a student of uh, Walter Bushinsky, and Stu Oxley was my technician. It, 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 there was a lot of fervor. Um, there wasn't a lot of students, but we all really pulled for each other and um, rigorous in terms of learning technique. Uh, I didn't really go out and socialize too much. I wasn't much of a partier, although I did enjoy dancing at the bull ring. <laughs> um, and then all our art history classes we're at um, the McKinnon building, spent a lot of time there, and coffee in the lower level at, um, oh, the theater building. I've forgotten its name. Uh, mm. yeah, yeah, I, I can, can picture, picture it, but, but I can't I think of what it's Yeah. <laughs> and so what I would do is I would, and I've always loved the semester system, I would often go in the summer and the fall, and then I would take off and go out west in the winter because I was also a very avid skier. I used to teach skiing and um raced a bit and so I, I would go up to Lake Louise for the winters and then come back and and the summer was great at Guelph because you know not as many students and it's, you can have the <laughs> when printmaking you want to have the windows open to flush out there's a lot of I don't think it had all the um, ventilation system that it, they should have had um, that aside um, I, I really loved going uh, to Guelph in the summertime good people um, you weren't just a number, you were there, and, and, and it was almost like each of us claimed a section, and it was like our studio, so it really helped set up for when I I did graduate and, and start up my first set of studios. Right, right. And, and like so, so many, many other Guelph students, 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 they just, they, just, uh, they never, never leave, leave, you know? You know? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a common, common story, story yeah, and, uh, but, uh, but, but you kind of did, did leave, leave uh, uh, now, now and again, again every, every year, year around starting around that time, time starting to travel quite extensively. 
Uh, uh, one, thing one thing before, before we get going, going could you, 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 if it's possible, can you turn the audio down, down on the live stream? Is this, I'm, I'm, I can, can just hear, hear a little bit of feedback. feedback. Uh, yeah, sure. No worries. No worries. So, so let's, let's talk, talk about, about that, that travel. travel. I've, I've had, had a lot of amazing, amazing images, images you, you gave me to show. I know you primarily were traveling to Turkey, but also India. I think we're going to focus a little bit more on India. And let's just take a look while we chat at some of these images that you sent me, your photography from, from, from India. India. How did, How did you, you uh, first get the idea to, to, to travel, travel to, to, to India? India? When was that? Yeah, there's no simple answer. <laughs> um, so, and, sorry, is the sound better now? I can, I can still hear it a little, little bit. bit. Oh, okay, uh, I can put, I can just... It's okay, it's live, internet, internet yeah. anything happens, happens and we just, just go, go with it. it. Yeah, I just want to be able to hear it. Is that better? Uh, okay, okay, test one, one two, two, three. three. Yeah, yeah, I can't hear it right now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, then I just have to strain to listen to you a little bit, so. Um, yeah, oddly enough, um, going back to when I was a kid and we had moved from uh, downtown Kitchener out to suburbia, uh, which was pretty barren, I, I used to sit on the front steps and think, okay, I've lost my, 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 my primal home. I, I'd sit on the steps and I would go, I want to know what everyone else in the world is doing. It was a really big question for me, almost like philosophically daunting. Um, so after I finished university, um, yeah, I'd, I'd gone to Europe for a year and then spent a lot of time in Turkey, but India in particular came uh, because I had started on Facebook, which I held off for a long time. I wasn't sure if it was for me, and I'd heard various reports, uh, some people really liked it, and then I thought, well, what better way to go and find out what other people are up to in different parts of the world? Like, it's free and it's visual. Um, so I signed on and I, I saw artists work from all over the world. Um, and then I became, I, I found one painter in India whose, whose work I really liked. He was an abstract painter. So I just messaged him and said, cause it was so different than a lot of the other work I'd seen, which was basically a re-chronicling of the, the mythological images. I didn't see a lot of contemporary art that didn't, um, pool in, in the traditions. So I thought what he was doing was was quite innovative. So I just messaged him and he said, oh, well, thank you. And I, um, he said he had just started working for a gallery and would I, he, he looked at my work and he said, well, the gallery I work for is looking to show artists from outside of India. Would you be interested in the show? <laughs> yes. You know, we get a chance to have a show. So um, long story short, uh, the owner liked my work. I had to get myself there, um, but they hosted the show for me. Um, it, was, it was a rather big exhibition. It was supposed to be in a small gallery, probably um, probably about the size of Renan Isaac's gallery here in Guelph. And so I had created a body of work and um, took it in two suitcases, unframed, and it was like burnished pastel with hand students. The uh, surfaces were so fragile, and I took 18 pieces and, uh, with raised matting face to face in two big suitcases on a visa that, you know, you're not supposed to go and do any commercial activity. And at the border, they said, and I said, no, I'm just going to shop for fabric. I just need these suitcases to. Anyway, um, yeah, that was daunting. Getting a visa for India back then, that was like 2010. Um, rules have changed somewhat since then. Um, so the night before, I arrived three days before the show was to open. The night before, they said, no, we're not going to have it at the gallery. We're going to have it at the big uh, Lalit Kala Academy, which is more like the main floor of the Art Gallery of Guelph. And I had to fill that. So I, I said to my, my colleague, take me to an art supply store. And I stayed up in the hotel. I painted all night, all night. And then we hung the works the next day. I was freaking out, but I realized that like when I got off the plane, it was uh, Diwali had just ended. The air was thick with smoke and pungent smells and there were parades and, and I kind of just felt like I'd gone down the rabbit hole. I thought, well, I guess I'm just in sync with everything else, just winging it here. And the show was a big success. It was the last thing I ever expected. Hundreds of people came. It was only on for five days. There's so many artists in India. I mean, just about everybody in the population is, is active in thread work or painting or, or some kind of 
some traditions. Um, so the shows are very short, so they can exhibit as many people as possible. Um, but and then they didn't tell me that I had to stay and sort of monitor my own show. I wanted to go travel. <laughs> anyway, um, that's kind of how it started. It was it was an invitation. I know, I know that experience, I call it being an art mule, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of smuggling visual art on the, on the lowdown into other countries to try to have exhibitions, it's like very exciting and mostly because like what you're saying, you don't know what to expect at all, uh, you know, it's a lot of question marks and a, lot of, a leap of faith to do it, but uh, it can also be extremely exciting, not just to exhibit in other places, but to... Uh, you, know, you know, to, to see, see what's, what's what's going, going on, on there. It's, it's, uh, I find that uh, it's, um, uh, uh, you know, can really expand what you think the limits of creative potential, potential are and, and different approaches, approaches to it and a new way of thinking about um, what it is to be human, human I, suppose, I suppose, as well. well. Um, so, so what uh, uh, what kind of things were you seeing there that, I guess, really caught your eye, really, you know, maybe changed your approach to what you're doing? We'll take a look at some photos of some... Uh, Indian, Indian craftspeople, craftspeople while, while, while you're, you're talking, talking about, about that. that. Um, well, I, I could talk at such length. Uh, I'm actually writing a book right now. It's slow and coming, but um, just about every facet of my being was affected uh, and everything I'd learned, even some of the other places that I've traveled, I just, I didn't have to throw it out the window, but it just, you have to start with a clean slate and be really open. And I think on a, on a really personal level, any issue or any um, facet of my character that I haven't thought about or come to some kind of resolve was presented to me. You have to really stand for yourself there and say what you want. Um, a lot of people make um, like the phrase saying it's chaos. It actually is not chaos at all. Everything's in momentum. Everything is exponentially in momentum. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a trajectory. And you, you just kind of learn to drop out of what you know and, and ride this wave and stand up for yourself. Or if, if you're faced with some sort of challenge, rise and face it because you'll be, you'll, you'll be shut down really quickly if you, if you don't stand your ground. So um, it's a country of incredible resource. Um, and you are respected if you hold your own, which, which was challenging for me because I was, you know, I, I don't like to, um, uh, talk too much about gender or, or race. I, I, I'm a humanist, but as a person and how people were seeing me, I had to really extra uh, devote energy to like, I'm from here. I'm here to listen. I'm here to look and observe. I'm here to network. Um, and, and once I really got that, um, that out there, that attitude out there, then, then I started making really incredible friendships and, and, and started to gel with, you know, that, what is seemingly chaotic, just doing my thing. And, um, and I would get back to Canada after being over there for two or three months at a time. And I couldn't jive back with some sort of North American way of doing things. I would come back to my studio and hibernate, even having a conversation with somebody was really, really difficult. Um, I, I, I turned around and went back the second time rather quickly because I had left most of my show there. The, the owner said she would do her best to sell it to collectors there. And then the gallery, unfortunately, was going to shut down. So I had to go back and retrieve or fight to retrieve the work. Um, that's a whole other story. Again, having to stand up and fight for myself and say, that's my work and, and try to get it back, which I, I did. I had to give up a couple pieces as a, as a thank you for them. Which, which was fine. I was going to gift them a piece anyway. Um, oh, yeah, everything from going on road trips. I spent a lot of time on the back of uh, friends' motorcycles, going to different regions of the country, um, camel processions, um, water buffalo. <laughs> there was one time I was on, I took a, a taxi ride from Varanasi to Baroda, which is clear across the widest part of the country, two colleagues of mine and all my friends in India said, don't, it's so dangerous, don't do it. But of course, I did. Um, and then there was this one section where we were on the road, it was coming sunset, and this massive flock of birds, 
that was using the road as their flight path just sort of guided us for about 50 kilometers. You could hardly see the road. So all kinds of beautiful visual um, systems of things and behaviors just came at you all the time. In fact, I explained it to a friend once. Have you seen the movie Life of Pi? Yes, yes, yes. A, a, a while ago. Yeah, the scene where the, the main character, I his name, he's standing up in the boat on the ocean and he's squinting off into the distance. And then the flying fish, I think it's flying fish, come at him and some are slapping him in the head and flying past him and he's just all caught up in that. Uh, that's kind of what it was like for me the whole time I was there. You just sometimes you lean towards something, you duck away. Um, just walking out in the street, uh, especially in Old Delhi, uh, you could be run over by a cart or a motorcycle. Um, my work is very much about my body and how my body is affected by space. So I, and I'm very open. And so to be like, I want it to be genuine to who I am. Uh, it just, I had a lot of information bombard me. Well, well I, I, I appreciate, appreciate that, uh, that, uh, that experience. As, uh, some, places some places I've, I've gone to, I, what I, I think I enjoyed the most is the intense visual, visual information that uh, we're not right. maybe so accustomed to uh, in Guelph or in Canada. Or, um, uh, I, I love it. Uh, just, like, it's, uh, it's an intense experience for someone who maybe thinks visually a little more. Um, but let's talk about some of uh, some of your printmaking and uh, 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 some, some, some of the ideas, ideas around it. We've got a few, got a few examples, examples to play while, while, while you're speaking, speaking but, but I guess, like, uh, how, how did you get, did you get into printmaking? Was it something you were doing at the University of Guelph? Did it come later? Tell me about that. Um, it, it actually started in high school, and uh, which was Eastwood Collegiate, which is now has the, uh, the arts package program, but it had always been a, very strong in the arts, theater, music, visual arts. Um, one of the teachers had a printing press, a etching press in the classroom. And I started printmaking actually in grade nine, learning um, you know, basic techniques. We didn't have any uh, of the etching acids or anything like that. So, but I learned dry point, which is the process of scratching into a surface, um, making a mark and then imbibing that with ink and then transferring that through pressure onto a piece of paper. Um, and my teachers were very good at, uh, we had a strong art history program. So if you were studying printmaking, uh, you were shown like artists like Whistler, Degas, um, uh, Manet, uh, painters who were also printmakers. And so I, I, I stored up a, a whole library of imagery uh, just from that, found, that foundation. And then by the time I got to University of Guelph, and, and I, 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 I felt really connected to printmaking, partly because it's very process oriented. Um, I like the idea of uh, the, the pressure, the use of a, of a tool, of the printing press. Um, I wasn't really interested in making multiples because that's one of the things that you, you know, it's the forte of printmaking is where you can design a plate. Um, I work mostly with sheets of copper. Actually, I, I bring one right there. Uh -huh, yes. yes. And um, so once you get your image like burnt into the plate or scraped, scratched into the plate the way you want, then you can make multiple. But each process, whether it's dry point, soft ground etch, uh, hard ground, I mean, there's. it took me about three years to further nuance each of those processes while at University of Guelph. Um, but I, and there they really wanted you to be able to create a, a, a rigorous uh, edition, at least of five images, because that was part of the excelling as a printmaker. Like, can you reproduce it? Not in a mass produced way, but just like the nuances of making your ink, wiping the plate, um, dampening your paper, putting it through the press. A consistent edition is what they were looking for. Um, and that was fine. That, that, and I like the rigor of that. But as I've gone on, I, I ended up buying my own press, which I have here in the studio. Um, I, I like to take the, the rigor of those traditions, but I tend to make one of a kind pieces. So I'll get an image incised into a plate and I'll print it. I might print 20 or 30 over the course of two or three weeks, but then I rework them with um, adding watercolor paint or pastel or stitch thread through the paper. 
Um, there's a process called Chine Calais where you can bind um, very, very fine um, uh, Wasley paper or um, oh. <laughs> Very fine papers you can you can attach to the the surface while it's going through the press. It's kind of hard to talk about. I I, I taught printmaking a lot, and it's like I can talk for hours. But if I just show you, it will just take a moment. So I encourage anybody who's interested and wants to visit me at my studio, who can, uh, maybe when things ease up a bit, um, I'm, I'm always happy to show the process. Well, well Carolyn, you, 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 you mentioned that you you, you, you enjoy, enjoy the, the process, process of it. Of it. Uh, that's, uh, that's something I'm really interested in because I've, I've never understood, understood that. that. Even in our college, I was never really into, into the process of any type of creation. creation. I found it, um, um, I, I, I don't know, know like, like I, I, it was always, always about, about like, like trying to do things as fast as possible, possible like, like to get to, get to the, the end, end result. Uh, uh, and, and especially if you're not uh, printing, you know, hundreds of multiples, like why, what is it in the process for you that you enjoy? Um, um, like, what, 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 what is it, is it almost like a meditative thing, thing or, or do you, you like, like seeing the step-by-step step step, uh, uh, coming to life, life or, or what, what kind of mind state, state are you in when you say like you enjoy the process of it, which most people say, I think I'm the weird one to not think that, but for you, how does that, how does that function? Um, yeah, I, I think you hit it exactly. It is, I mean, it's many things, but there, the meditative uh, state of it, it, is profound. Um, I, I like working with the material, having it in my hands. Where where can I take it? Um, and with printmaking, you can manipulate a plate, whatever is going to receive the ink. And so you question it, you push it, and that 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 is a state of inquiry, which I think is also very meditative. Um, each time you approach it, it's it's a new experience. Even though you have this wake of information, and, and um, you know I've been printmaking since 1980, no, 1978 actually. Um, but every time I approach it, it brings something new to it. So, uh, and I don't feel the need to calm down. I'm a very intense person actually, but very open. So it's a very interesting space to be in when you know you're about to make something but you allow uh, tradition and possibility to, to guide you. And it, it, it's a really lovely kind of trajectory to stay in. It's a nice gauntlet to stay in. Um, the printmaking, there is something about cranking the wheel of a press, pushing it through. There's a mystery there. You're, you, you've had a certain amount of control and knowledge, but there will always be something new come out when you and you pull the felts back and you lift your paper and see what you've got and then you go from there so it, it, it's a journey and and you really get out of it what you put into it and then some so you you stay very alive and whether you want to call it meditative or not but you stay very connected to a material and also a time on a tradition so um yeah well, let's, 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 uh, let's, uh, let's speak, speak about, about a time-honored time tradition that you also do that, that well, I, 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 I would, I'm, I'm assuming, assuming I'm not an art historian, historian but that is older, older, I believe, than printmaking, than printmaking. Um, um, as, far as far as I can, I can think, think of, of, but painting, painting. sort of the, what, what you know, you know is, is maybe like the very core of a lot of what people think about art or come to art with, still sort of like the... The king, the king or the, or the queen, queen of, of the, the top of the pyramid, pyramid in, in the, the contemporary, contemporary art world, world as far as how it plays into the market, market and uh, what, what people, people sometimes, sometimes expect or all, all sorts of ideas like this. You also paint. Um, I'm really, I'm really interested, interested in talking to, to our, our guests, guests about, about like uh, uh, just, just sort of how they think, think about, about what they're doing. So could you talk a little bit while we look at some examples of your paintings? Um, you, know, you know, like, like what, what, I guess, I guess uh, how, how would you, would you approach, approach an idea, idea uh, to, to do, do a painting rather than a print? print. Like, like where's that, that differentiate in your mind? mind? These are such excellent questions. And for me, I don't work from ideas so much. I, I have a desire to, again, it goes back to that formation of when I was a kid to like put a mark down and then see what happened or reconnect with that very, Kind of primal state. Um, I have, I guess, over the past 30 years, sort of either been painting or printmaking. I don't do both at the same time because it is a, 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 it's 
a mental shift, it's a body shift, it's a physical shift. Like when I'm setting up for printmaking, I need several tables, soaking paper, um, making ink from scratch. I, I purchase pigments from all over the world, and then I make my own inks, and that's there's a rigor to that. Painting is um, it's so immediate, and oftentimes I'll sort of swing back to painting because I've kind of exhausted myself out of, uh, of you know several months of printmaking and I just want to make something really quickly uh, what is my gesture and, and quickly record that um, the, the drive to paint was really really strong in the 80s and into the 90s it's actually not so much there anymore uh, I don't know why I, I love mixing up paint and I, I love connecting with the surface. Um, but it, there's sort of this strange lack of continuum between mixing my color, turning and applying, stepping back, looking at it, like the whole aesthetic conversation that you have is, has become a bit broken for me. Um, although I, I, I love painting and I, I buy paintings. If I see a painting that I love, I have to. I, if I can afford it, I will buy it or I will trade a work for it. Um, I've, I've worked with Pearl Van Geest. We made two, no, we made 50 paintings together for an exhibition a few years ago, and that was that was incredible. What a great conversation, not only with you and the canvas, but also with another person who I deeply love and respect. Um, but it's kind of fallen away from me, so I I almost have a hard time speaking about it because I'm not actively immersed myself in painting right now. Um, well, let's, 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 it, it doesn't feel like something that my body can, is, is moving toward. I, and that could change in a month's time. I mean, I'm in this really weird hiatus right now with the COVID, and I'm thinking a lot about the situation of the world and what, you know, the needs that are there. Um, does the world need another painting right now? Like, I guess, yes. But not, it's not coming from me. I just, it's just not right now. <laughs> I, I completely understand, understand that. that. I mean, I, I don't, don't uh, I'm, basically I'm basically just a curator now, but occasionally I, occasion I make, make my own, own art in a, in a private sort of way. And, and painting, painting to me is, is what, what I used to do before, before I started doing video. video. But, but it's, it's like, like this thing that just comes back to maybe every four or five years. I just have this thing that's like, time to do it for a few days. And then I give up on it. You know, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it, it finds, finds me more than anything, anything and I have no expectations, expectations about it. it. But, but I mean, it's, it's sort, sort of this like, uh, grappling between like, you know, you know what, what can I do versus, versus like all these tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of paintings I've seen. And, you know, how does it live up to that? And it can be intimidating, even though it's such an easy thing to smush some colors around on the surface. But Oh, it's it's wonderful when when you're really connecting with the making of a work. I actually did make a really big painting an older piece that never reached a point of success in my mind. And I completely reworked it a month ago. And it was the only painting I worked on. It was totally joyous. I, I brought it to a point where I, I'm thrilled about it. I uh, hope to show it sometime in the future. Um, but it, it's just, it, it's just went over into that little niche and like it had its own meditation. And then it was like, that's the lesson I needed to go into or whatever the teaching was there or, or, or completed after it's something I'd started it was actually in a show I think in 1993 so but the canvas it still had good bones and, and there was it was like a story that hadn't quite finished the, I hadn't reached the ending yet I need it maybe I just needed more experience uh, there's a lot of work I have a really big studio and I have hundreds of pieces that I won't say I've abandoned but they're, they're, they're there's an artist whose work I really like her name is Marty Kerr and she refers to her studio where she's working on sculptural pieces and um, paintings and drawings and she says she'll have a lot of pots cooking in the kitchen on the stove cooking and I said yeah I can I really can relate to that mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's, let's move, move on, on from, from painting, painting to, to something, something that I, was, I, was, I, love I love seeing these, these uh, images, images you provided me of sort of your thread, thread works, works or textile, textile works, works uh, uh, you know almost, almost Almost, almost like, like uh, getting, getting into, into more, more like sculptural, sculptural things, things in a, in a sense. sense. Um, um, 
Uh, we're going to take a look at some examples of that, but I mean, we've already seen some examples of how you're incorporating thread and, uh, into your printmaking, but also like actually printing from fabric or lace. Uh, I mean, do you think about uh, what you're doing with uh, Threadworks uh, kind of differently, or is it like a natural extension of your printmaking? Um, how, how, do you, how do you approach your Threadworks and textile work? Yeah, I think it's both. Um, it's it, there's, I guess, like an undercurrent of, of desire to see, like, what else? Where can I push this into? Um, the lace work started for me when I started inheriting it from, you know, women in my family who passed on, and and and, and, and that coupled with uh, heirloom photographs. Like I have a great aunt who left me over 400 of those beautiful mounted photographs that have insignias from the, the the photography studio and often the calligraphy and the very lacy work so there's a visual relationship between uh the, sort of this flourishing of the things that are precious plus the lace work i started musing on you know what what were these and it's not always women but in predominantly it is, I mean, what were they thinking? What was going on in their lives? I'll never know. There's already an inherent mystery. You get this, I have a big bag of, <laughs> someone just gave me a, a big bag. This is only a part of a whole box full of lace and said, you know, I know you're working with this now. See? And I'm, it's like hundreds of hours of musing from someone else that all I can hope to do is while I work with it, whatever I end up doing is on some level possibly make a connection and it, it won't be anything that I can concretize it's just amusing or a possibility and that really excites me because um, you know it, it's like making a connection and I guess as well because of this co the COVID issue we're dealing with and saying we're all in this together I've been working with thread for a long time and using on it but it I, I, I feel like the genre the milieu of this idea of us all being connected is becoming reaffirmed again in my work. Um, I'm working mostly with material made by people who've passed on and yet it's still very alive and, and teaching me something. Um, yeah, it's just, and it's so intricate and beautiful. And, and again, like printmaking, there's a concentration or something that's made through a certain kind of pressure. So it's a metaphor. Um, so for me, the material suggests certain things, but there, there are, like, I've been criticized, oh, you do too many different things. I'm like, well, if you really look, the, the themes and the energy, uh, the, the, thematically and, and the desire to work with the material is, it's very unified. So I, I did a show at, um, with Aiden Ware, uh, curated at, at the Stratford Gallery, and, and you walk in and it looked like very, very disparate work, but yet if you really there was maybe 50, 60 pieces, but there was a, a core there that, that was the thread of it. It all came through my psyche and was reworked, whether it was thread or lace or printmaking or painting or hanging a sari from the ceiling. It was all the same kind of um, uh, trajectory, I guess. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. absolutely, and I think that's, that's what, what I find interesting, interesting about, about your work, seeing, seeing so, so much, much of it uh, all together, kind of for, kind of for the first time, sort of fragments of it, is how much, pun intended, there are threads through through it. it. Uh, uh, and that's what I'm very curious about, about is how you, how you differentiate from uh, 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 the different things, things between printmaking, painting, painting, and your thread works, or even if in your mind there is no a uh, real, real difference because, because I'm kind of, of in your situation, situation I kind of wonder uh, maybe that's, that's those are very arbitrary uh, classifications, classifications that are just conveniently applied through people, people like me in the art world to describe art, art uh, um, through, traditions through traditions and whatnot, and whatnot. But, but maybe uh, uh, maybe it doesn't really matter, matter so much in, in, in a sense, sense. Uh, what, what you're doing and most of the artists I'm interviewing do many different things do you think of do you think of them in little boxes and little silos or you just kind of like, like sitting, sitting down, down and getting, getting to, to work. work yeah I don't package them at all um, they do kind of ebb and flow through each other very much like threads of a weaving I mean sounds a bit uh, it's hard to describe and then words also can be really it can describe something can really open up 
uh, the, the way what a work is read, but it can also really close it down. So every, every act, there's like a contradiction going on. Um, it's amazing to try and talk about your work in that you may see a facet or, or talk, mention a facet that you know, oh, gee, you know, I really didn't think of that, or, oh, no, this really limits it down. Um, so I don't categorize them. Uh, uh, work begets work. It, you know, I'll work on something, and then it'll reach a natural point where, oh, like, aha, uh -huh, mm -hmm, this kind of is something that can live on its own now. It's, it's, it's done with me. I'm done with it. And, but there's still the curiosity or the using, oh, okay, if I work with this material, um, let's see. Well, case in point, I'll just show you. I'm not sure if you've shown the slide of, of this particular piece. The, oh, it's, oh, it's coming, coming up. up. Yes. This one? Yes. yes. It's, it's great, great to see, to see it, it in, in real, real life, life though. though. Well, it's so interesting because just like, I guess almost three weeks ago now, this is layers and layers and layers and layers of paint put over top of, I'll show you the back. It was something that I collected in India. You get a lot of these carved wood pieces. But then I realized that I slowly, meticulously, I could peel just the paint away. And so there you have a print of the piece of wood. Ah. So I kind of came around oddly full circle to being a default printmaker through a material without even using a press. And so I was looking at Oh, okay. Well, now what can I do with that? Uh, maybe nothing. Maybe a whole series of works. It, it could just be this particular piece of wood had a, a varnish on it that resisted the kind of paint I was using. could be a one-off. But again, the material will uh, it, it will offer possibilities and it will also say, oh, this is as far as you can take it. So it, it's it's a relationship. It's a relationship that has to be kept alive for me. I, 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 get I get that because, because uh, 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 you, know, you know, that, that thing, thing that, that we just, just showed is that, you know, is, 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 is it a painting? Is it a sculpture? Is it a, a relief? Like, like almost like, like a print from, from the original, original like, uh, but, but in, in a way, way like, like who, who cares? cares? You know, a lot of, <laughs> maybe yeah, I think the best art always lies in these kind of gray areas between definitions. And I think a lot of artists sort of struggle to define themselves, maybe in particular when they're, say, writing a grant application, it has to be in a very specific practice or, or trying to uh, propose a show, a show and, and it's like, well, it's sort of this, but it's not, and it's this as well. Um, I mean, I, 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 I kind of wish the, the uh, official art world, world would open their minds a little bit more uh, to think, think a little less about genres or traditions or, traditions or mediums or, or and, and, and sort of like these rules around them about, uh, about, about how they work. So I think you, I think you have like a natural way of doing that, though. Um, and it, it looks, looks great. great. I mean, I mean we're even, even, even at, at the, the very, very end of some of these slides, I'm seeing things that are, that are I guess, straight up more like sculptures, you know, you know? Um, but, um, but they're still, still sort of like a reference uh, to, to, to all your other practices, practices as well. well. Mm -hmm. One thing well, I'm they're, very... they're all, um, they're all self portraits in a way too. Like I occupy physical space. So everything that I make also occupies physical space, which is a sculptural idea. Um, I don't know how you can ever escape from that really. Um, even the act of, like I do a lot of thread work, um, the act of taking a needle and thread, moving through space, coming through a surface, the other side, that occupies space. And, you know, you have to pay attention to that space or you end up damaging the material or yourself. But So there's a, a mindfulness there. And then after it's finished, okay, yeah, I get, there are desires to want to categorize it. I, I don't need to. Um, I find that when one thing flows into another, and even the time away from it. That's also uh, part of the, you know, the ebb and flow of being alive and, and honoring the artist within, I, I guess. One thing, One thing I'd, I'd, I'd love, love to, 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 to hear, hear your thoughts, thoughts about, about are... It's this idea that I think about a lot, and I've talked to a few other artists on the show about it, is like, um, kind of like embedding uh, an aura or some kind of like unique lifeblood into what you do uh, with the hopes that I guess it can like stand on its own. Uh, um, um, through time, through, time, through different, different environments or contexts, contexts uh, with, with different, different viewers. viewers. Um, um, you, know, you know, like, like people, people, this is a strange, strange idea to talk, to talk about, but people, people know when they see it. Like, like uh, and it, it works differently for everybody. For everybody. Um, um, you know, you, know, you, you might, might go, go to a, a large museum, museum and there's one piece that'll just like kind of 
pop out at you for some reason. Uh, it's like beyond comprehension in the usual sense of applying logic to it. It just like just hits you. Um, I mean, I, I think, think a lot of your work, work is, is doing that, that uh, uh, from, from your d various influences, influences and uh, whatnot. whatnot. But, but like, what? How do you think, think about? about um, you know, you know how, how, how do you, you breathe, breathe this life blood into, into your work, work or, or how do you know, you know when, when it's like working for you or, or predicting it works, works for others or no one it's done and to leave it? it. Um, like, how, how do you think, think about, about the energy, energy that's, that's within your work in its different, different genres, genres like, like as, as apart from, from you? you. Hmm. Well, just backtrack to what you said. I mean, isn't it great to be able to, to be hold something and be moved? Um, and we never know when that's going to happen. Um, I, years ago, I, I think it was in the Grand Palais in Paris, uh, and I've been a long standing, um, just been passionate about the work of Degas, uh, and even more so in the last year or so, because my vision thing that happened, but, um, a, a pastel drawing of his that I saw, saw in a book, studying as a student, like, well, and then I saw it in real life, and it was this tiny little drawing, big frame little drawing. And I walked, and it just, I was riveted to it. And in that small space, the, uh, the fervor and the intensity that came out of it to, towards me or, or me being receptive to it was, it just knocked me, practically knocked me over. And I'm a kind of person that will fall over and pass out in front of a bad painting too. I'm very, very affected by, you know, visual stimulus. I won't talk about that now. <laughs> um, I guess if if there's a, a, a genuine connection with the material, and I, I think that should should be there if you're going to commit to make art, you, you know, you should really be committed to it um, and not be sloppy, really focus. And then depending on whatever experience is you know, in, in your wake coming through that and makes it, I don't think you have any control over who will be affected by it, um, nor should you. I think you should be committed to the moment of the making and, you know, it, 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 let it, let it birth be what it is and let its life be what it is. And if you're lucky enough to come back and view it, you know, in two or three years or, or whatever amount of time, and it's still, you know, you'll be a different person than it, is it the same thing? I don't mean, these are all big questions um, worth musing on. Kind of impossible to answer, but isn't it great that there is this you know, kind of space to be like ready to receive um, the joy of, of that? Yes, 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 I think, I think, I think it, it is. is. I think you hit something, something there that's, that's like, like extremely wise advice for, for uh, maybe aspiring, aspiring artists, artists, young artists, artists whatever, whatever, is this, this idea of just like, like um, Making, making with, with only, only good, good intentions, intentions not, not intentions, intentions uh, to, to sort of sort manipulate, manipulate the reading of it. it. I, mean, I mean, this, this is something I've come coming, coming through, through to through, through the years of being a curator. curator we're realizing, realizing like the, the meaning, meaning is very, uh, uh, might be might interpreted, interpreted in flexible, flexible ways, ways, but um, if, if there's, there's some, some kind of like a central truth in it, I think that you, I almost say you can almost smell it when you go near the art. And I think a lot of, especially like, Younger, younger artists, artists or artists, artists who are, um, you know, in studying at university, university or whatnot, whatnot they're, they're, they're really about, like, well, the, like, like, it means, means this thing, thing and, and this, this is the piece and the puzzle, puzzle and, you know, this is the references, references and the, the, the meaning is fixed. fixed. But, but I, I, I find that's a, a very often not, not true. true. It really, it really depends, depends on the context. Because, you know, if you showed something here in Guelph, it would read very differently if you showed it in India. Absolutely. You know, so... Uh, to, put uh, to put this, this like, like uh, I guess it's like, like part, part of you, you or, or love or, or, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, like energy into it. it. Um, do you think, you, you know, is that, that is that kind of the approach, approach like you're kind of meeting, kind of meeting your, your own artwork, artwork halfway, halfway when, when you're making, making it? it? Again, I, I don't know what the equation would be. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I just try to be as open as possible and to, to filter it and let it live in whatever, whatever, whether I'm reading a book, I read a lot of, I'm reading Orhan Pamuk's My Name is Red right now. I'm a little behind when it first came out and I should have read it then, but 
um, because I've lived in Istanbul and, and in Turkey, the book is going to resonate differently with me. And I, I'm taking some of this downtime to read some books that I normally might rush through. So it, it's because of all the conditions going on right now, I can be really open to what I think it deserves as well. Um, and there, there's an artist whose work, I, I, well, many, many artists whose work I love, but one in particular who's really moved me in the last few years is the, the work of Sean Scully. You know, when he talks about, you know, being open. He, he is a very rigid structure of, of the, the, the shapes that he uses when he's building. And he's a painter, but he's not just a painter. He's a philosopher and he's a pool player and does sculptural big building blocks, and, um, especially hewn stone. But there's this openness, and the, the I, and I don't think it's about coming back to like I don't need to have like Carolyn Riddell stamped on everything. I don't like I, you know, I, I I try to keep only healthy ego enough to get me out of bed in the morning and make coffee and and like get to work or do whatever, but to not need to um, necessarily be the me. I try to disappear and be. Um, just in the work and if I start thinking too much then I I'm, I'm out and I need to back away I, you know it's kind of difficult to talk about this it's, again it's when you get into that meditative state and and you are you disappear I'm just a floating pair of eyeballs and my senses activating something which is also a I, I, I know, I know I'm, I'm asking, asking these, these are, are big, big questions, questions. Kind of and I love it. it I love it because <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of sort like, like tell me about, about your like, like the things, things that are hard, hard to put into words, words about why you're doing what you do, you do. but let, can, can, we can we talk about, about just, just, just briefly uh, sort of about, about something, something you just mentioned your floating eyeballs and some challenges you know that you've gone through in the last year or so with that can you tell the viewers sort of about you know a bit about what happened but also what's coming out of it and Maybe how it's changing the way you're thinking or approaching your work? Yeah. Well, I'll start off by saying I am a really lucky person. Uh, it's almost a year ago. Uh, I was in an accident. I, I don't want to get too graphic with it, but um, I ended up suffering what's called a trauma cataract. I had some damage to my sinuses and muscles behind my eye. And the shock of it caused a... I'd never heard of it before. I mean, I had a couple small cataracts starting in my late 50s now, and I knew I'd have to deal with that at some point. But the the, the blunt force frosted over the cornea of my eye, and they couldn't do anything with the, the medical people attention that I saw. It. They said, "Well, you're going to need about six months to let the muscles heal, and then we'll reassess your eye." And and I naively or I mean, I come from a chiropractic household and, and the power of the body and the ability to heal is very strong. So I was putting all my energy into um, saying, I'm, I'm going to heal this cataract. But when the, the muscles healed and went back, I saw two different clinics um, within two weeks of each other. And they said, no, you're, you're, you're going blind in your right eye. So I, by the time I had really, you know, concretize that in my head and dealt with it emotionally okay and then the um the medical uh, practice the what's that? <laughs> health um sorry i'm starting to lose my words here because it's still i guess a bit trauma traumatic for me um the health system couldn't even see me for a consultation until this month like right now and i would have been blind so i hired um i went to a private clinic and they took care of me and cost money and I lost a fair bit of time in the studio. Um, but I had the surgery and it was successful. I'm now at the six month past and I'm supposed to have one more uh, look at it, but everything's closed right now. But, but basically they replaced the lens in the eye. And, but fr while I was waiting for the surgery, what happens is my brain was re rewiring because I was taking all my information with my left eye, which, is my strong eye, which I was lucky for that as well. And then post-surgery, my brain started to readjust again with information coming in from the both eyes. So it it, it required, um, I, I fatigued very easily because it's just, you know, all your energy is going to try and 
you know, reprocess and then, or to reprocess after the accident and then reprocess back to what was familiar. I can still feel the, the scar like every time I blink, but I have really great vision again. And so, and while that process was going on, I, I put a call out on Facebook actually, like, I'm going to need to raise some money. A friend of mine from Toronto uh, said, you know, you, you've got to reach out. It was really hard for me, but I did. And the expenses, the cost, the medicine, the time away was all covered by my friends and colleagues on a, a GoFundMe. I was so deeply moved by that. Um, and just any of those who might watch this, I just want to thank them again from the bottom of my heart. And now I want to help out more so than you know, if anybody else is going through a challenge, just try and be there. Um, right now with COVID, I'm sewing masks, not masks, sorry, the, the caps with buttons so that people who wear masks don't have to have their ears. Because I just feel like that's actually what I'm producing right now. I'm not even making much art. Like, okay, there's this need. And, and I just feel like that's so. And while I'm sewing for a need that's, um, you know, there's a demand, my mind is healing and I'm building up energy for whatever my next body of work is going to be. So. Well, I'm, I'm very glad, glad that, that, you know, you know uh, although it's quite, quite, quite traumatic, traumatic that you've come, come out, out uh, uh, well, well out of it. Of it. It's, it's real tribute, tribute to, to the power of our community, of our community here in Guelph well, and just, just of, uh, you, know, you know, the, the contemporary art community. Yeah, we, we help each other out. And, and uh, I remember, I remember seeing, seeing, you know, some, some information, information about this when it's happening and not really understanding it. But when I saw you again last week, by chance, when I was out for a walk, I was very happy to hear that you've had the surgery you require and that your eyesight is, you know, basically back to what it was. Uh, I said it's you know important for anyone, anyone but especially, especially for a visual, visual artist uh, uh, it can be devastating, devastating to even lose some of it um, so I'm very very happy about that um, um, let's, let's let's go, go now and, and let's let's, let's do, do the, the, the Turkish, Turkish teacup tea reading I'm, I'm very excited, excited. Say my <laughs> coffee cup I always want to say tea uh, say uh, equate Turkey, Turkey to the mint tea but the coffee too is amazing I'm still buzzing from it yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm probably going to go home and pour myself another one on your back. Well, I think I, I might do it just a slightly scaled down. Normally, this is done sort of in, in private, um, but uh, the, the reading of a Turkish uh, coffee cup is, is a time honored. Um, I need I need a certain bit of. Well, it's quiet here in my studio today, which is great, but I also know I'm online, so I'm going to have different energy. So let's. Um, I'm just going to tip this down a little bit. And um, if, oops, maybe, where is it there? Uh, <laughs> pull it closer to you. Yeah, sorry. I'll have to have it up on my hand here. Um, okay. Mm. Now, I won't be able to show the camera or you because then that will disturb the reading. Mm. Well, you're, you have a very clear um, progress. Um, you, you can interpret this however you are, and you, you know the, Scott made a wish when there's a whole ritual of turning the, 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 the cup clockwise and then flipping it. And so whatever wish you had, you can use on that while we speak. Don't, and don't, don't say it or tell it to anybody. Um, yet you have very, it's a very clear path that you have. Your, your trajectory forward is, is um, very positive, very uplifting. Um, there's no ceiling. You can take whatever project you have as far as you want it to go. There are two mountains. One is snow covered and one is dry or could be the, the seasons. Um, the mountains are, are side by side and they are uh, kind of looking in awe of each other as so a respect for the seasons, the cycles of life. There is a fire. Uh, uh, in, in the home, not a devastating fire, like a, a hearth. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's burning brightly and it's, uh, it's creating light, 
creating warmth and energy, uh, nurturing. Uh, the heat is, is rising and, and bringing um, comfort, which, and I, I don't want to add anything to it, but I'll just say that I think is actually really positive during these times because we're all in home. We want to be home and feel nurtured. And that, that is your present state, where, where things on the home front are, are really lovely and warm. There's um, generosity. The two mountains could be you and, and your wife um, are offering like, like pillars of strength for each other while you both nest at home. Um, there is... Uh, There is a real warmth and clarity and light as the overall aura of the cup. Like, and that's what we're supposed to do is what is our initial intuitive impression. Um, and as you go towards the future, there, there is, things are floating and moving. They're in flux. But there's no, um, there are no barriers to where you want to take things. In fact, then there are sections that rise, that uplift the the flow of where you want to take your projects in the future. It's very, very light. It's full of optimism. Almost looks like uh, the, you know, Hokusai's uh, prints of mountains, those Japanese mountains. There's this sort of soft, subtle uh, rhythm of the landscape. Very nice. And. Uh, Well grounded. <laughs> I may uh, I may do a, a more in depth reading at some point. But then the second part is you take the you now it's been sitting for a while. Normally there's a little bit of liquid in the cup and or in the saucer and you pour it into the cup. Um, Fish. The uh, big systems, the ocean, schools of fish moving. Um, and again, I'm I'm just feeling like um, things are in cycles. Things are moving towards where they need to go to be sustained. So, you know, fish will move in schools with its colleagues and, and move towards a, a, a zone where they can be protected and fed and, and nurtured. Um, over, overall, a very lovely, very calm reading. Oh, things are in flux, but, but supported. So I think that's probably, <laughs> given the fact that we're doing this through technology, it's the first time I've done that. <laughs> I hope that's okay. I... But it, it's a lovely effervescent light reading. So. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for that. that. I, I, I appreciate, appreciate that. that. This is a, the, the traditional, traditional way, way to do Turkish, Turkish coffee, coffee cup readings. It's not during a global, global pandemic, pandemic over the, the internet. internet. Yeah. Or, uh, or could could very well be the time. But uh, you'll have to come over and we'll, we'll drink more coffee. And uh, hopefully soon, the you know, whatever amount of time we need to eradicate this. But I want to you know reconnect with friends and, and get back to the rituals that we love and Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, when, when it is, it is possible, possible, let's do it the, the, as, as close, close to the, the proper ways as, as possible. And then, Absolutely. And when it's safer to do that. Um, well, I, really I really appreciate those words. I'm glad they're recorded, recorded for me to <laughs> listen to it again. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, I mean, you know, you know what, 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 the, what are your final, final thoughts about, about, you know, just everything, everything. Like, like about what's going on? Has it, you know, changed any of your ideas, I suppose? You know, are you reapproaching re what you do with your work or your life? life uh, you know, you know what, what I mean, have you learned? Are, are, we, are you, I guess, I guess as, as an artist, as a person, person like maybe, maybe learning, learning anything, anything uh, from our current, current situation? situation? Oh, sure. I mean, just staying uh, really aware and listening and, and remaining hopeful. Um, you know, as, as a, I believe in healing, I believe in health. So I try to and will 
continue increasingly to every, every gesture that I do go towards an act of healing, caring. Uh, I'm, I'm mindful of how much energy I use, like lights and, and working my stove. Uh, I, I, I just moved last month. So I'm only five minutes from my studio. I walk, um, which I'm happy about. I contemplate actually closing my studio um, because the, the work that I make, I can actually sit in a chair anywhere and do it. Like, I, I think the stitching is going to uh, be the, the process for now. And I've set up a little sewing area in my home. I, I, I Part of me wants to just kind of not close in, but, but, be really home-based and yet I have a framing business I need space to do that that's how I support myself when you know I you never know when a piece of art is going to sell and my printing press is here so um it, 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 it's a contradiction because I want the space I want to be able to make work but I also kind of want to nest a lot so I'm, I'm juggling that right now I think probably what I want to do is when the isolation and they're lifted. I, I'd like to maybe get some other artists in here to do some printmaking. So this is shared space. And um, maybe get back to a little bit of teaching. Um, I taught for over 25 years and I haven't taught for about three years. And again, it's a way of making a connection. So I, there's a lot of things on the table right now. Um, oddly enough, I was supposed to be flying back from Turkey today. <laughs> but, but this is also a form of travel. <laughs> Um, I was going to go at the end of March until today um, with my partner. We were going to go. Um, I lucked out years ago to cycle around Europe, but I spent three months cycling up the Turkish coastline. I was going to go back and revisit some of those places and then do a bit of sailing. So um, I'm hoping travel will be, but of course I'll be very mindful of my carbon footprint. And... Um, I'm maybe a bit abrasive. My one abrasive side is I go into the community if I see someone talking on their cell phone or idling their car, I step up and I, as kindly as I can, just say, the planet would really like it if you just didn't you know, contribute. So I, that's part of my work too. <laughs> so anybody else wants to help me with that, jump on board. Um, yeah, just... And, well, in the last few days, and I think I'm not the only one to notice it, but the skies have been so clear. So we're on a good path on some levels, and I hope we can just clean up our, our, our big mama and take good care of her and keep creating and stay as healthy as possible. Well, that, that's, that's some, some good, good positive, positive attitudes, attitudes to, to have. have. I'm, I'm glad, glad you, uh, you know, have your... your Ability, ability to, to see, see for, for one, one but, but also, also to work, work continue working, working and it's, uh, you know the you know, space and the things, things that you need to, to do that and, and uh, the, generosity the generosity to think about uh, uh, what, what you're doing and also about how to include other people and, and I want to thank you for your generosity today to share your stories and also uh, all the beautiful images of your work uh, that we played while we were speaking and uh, just, just to take, take the, the time, time to come on this show because I know it's, uh, it's it can be a little bit nerve-wracking to speak live on the internet and it's uh, always recorded but uh, but uh, I think it's it's great and if people enjoy it and hearing these stories um, maybe it's a little bit of positivity uh, send out into the universe and, and whether or not it comes back yeah so thanks so much I'll see you around the, I'll see you around the neighborhood and, uh, Definitely. <laughs> and we can get together, we'll together we'll meet again, again in, in, in real, real life, life properly. properly. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. you. We'll, we'll talk, talk, we'll talk, talk soon. soon. Okay, take good care. You Thank too. You. All, right, All right, so, so if you're just joining us, us that, that was an interview uh, with Carolyn Riddell from Guelph talking about the many facets of what she does, the differences and similarities, her ideas behind it, and just a few things about her life and what she's what she's, she's been, up been up to in a little while. while. Um, um, appreciate, appreciate everybody who's uh, watched, watched live, live and for your comments. comments or if there was this uh, uh, echo that happened on uh, one of the first shows, shows and, and I thought I rectified, rectified it, but that's okay. okay. You just, just uh, go, go with it. it. There's, There's no, no tech crew here. here. It's just me and a lot of buttons in front of me. So hopefully the live stream worked for everyone and you could hear what I was saying and what my guest Carolyn was saying as well. 
As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, we're going to switch. We're going to have a few shows coming up uh, next week, uh, tomorrow and next week. And then we're going to switch the following week into just the Tuesday and Thursday format just to sort of rein it in a little bit. Uh, I'm really excited about this show a few weeks ago, but didn't realize, uh, you know, to do it well, how much how much dedication and work it, it is. And I'm kind of falling behind in a few other life things and that video things and, and uh, whatnot that I have to stay on top of. But... We hope, we hope that, that people, people do watch, watch uh, do enjoy, enjoy it. it. Uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, my co-host Edie will, will be back, back tomorrow. tomorrow. I don't know. We'll, we'll have, have to see. Um, but, but in the meantime, meantime uh, do, do join, join us tomorrow on Friday, Friday for a uh, live interview with Verse uh, from right, right here in Guelph, talking, talking about their, their live AV act, act and uh, uh, what, what they, they do and how they're thinking about it and what they're up to in the last few weeks as well, what they're hoping to happen. So, so thanks, thanks a lot, lot again for all of our viewers, to video, video, to the video's funders, the Canada Council for the Arts, the Ontario Arts, Arts Council, and the City of Guelph. And, and a special big thanks to my guest uh, today, Carolyn Riddell. Um, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, here we go. I'm going to play as out. I don't play keyboards, but I'm going to try. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Have fun, everyone. I'll see you. See you tomorrow.